Coach, there, how are you today? I'm great, thank you. Well, we really appreciate you taking Look. time with us. Um, Rick Pitino, head coach of Iona College. The Gales ranked second in this year's preseason poll with Asante Gist and Isaiah Ross on the second team. Uh, coach, if you could just quick just begin with an opening statement. Well, we've been going at it uh, for the last couple of weeks and had a few, few distractions, but not many. Some other teams have been hit a little bit harder than us, certainly. And um, we're excited. It's a new season. We have, for me, it's 15 basically new players. Uh, I don't have any returning players for the system I run. So it's uh, the first year is always the most difficult, but always a lot of fun as well. Awesome. We will switch it over to questions from the media. Rachel Lindsay from the Buffalo. Um, we saw you first. Hey, Rick, thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, you know, this has just been a really unusual preseason so far, unusual year, and the pandemic has already affected the season. How do you pre prepare for potential disruptions this year in the schedule, or can you even really prepare for it? Well, you really can't. I, I actually thought Coach K and the ACC coaches came out with something that was just great innovative and creative that every single basketball team makes the NCAA tournament. That would just get everybody calmed down and saying, look, we're going to have disruptions. Don't worry about how many games you get in. Do the best you can to get around COVID. And then I think it would be a tremendous shot in the arm for the interest level of college basketball going into March, that every single team, just the interest would be unparalleled that we've had in college basketball for every team to make it small schools that have never ever competed in the NCAA tournament. I, I thought it was a unique creative idea that was just shut down immediately and I thought it being shut down was a big mistake. I really thought it should have been studied because of all the interruptions, postponements and difficulties we are going to have. So I, I, I really think we missed the boat on that one and uh, I'm not sure how many interruptions, postponements, or cancellations we are going to have. But obviously, with it spiking right now and 10 million cases, um, you know, over 240,000 deaths, I, I, we did get some good news with the vaccine, certainly, but uh, that's probably sometime this spring. Next up, we have Doug Feinberg. Doug? Hey, Coach. You've been around the game for a long time. There's no coaching handbook 101 for dealing with this virus. How have you found ways to sort of keep your team motivated and to mentally be in this, knowing what's going on in this world? Well, for, for young people, the virus obviously is, is not something that's going to bother them as much as someone my age or some of the older coaches in the game. So certainly we have to take the precautions. We, we, we constantly tell our players to wash their hands every moment they get to try and limit their contact with the with outside of the the immediate basketball team to also wear, wear masks at all time but no matter how much precautions you take we, we had a young lady on the women's basketball team who just went into a, I, I believe it was a Chipotle's restaurant with a mask on and she caught the virus so uh, it, unfortunately there's there's safeguards but they're not all iron proof and we certainly tried to just educate our players as much as possible. And so far, we've been able to uh, skirt most of it. Thanks, Coach. Next up, we have Dylan Manfrey from Ryder. Dylan, go ahead. Hey, Coach Patino, how are you today? Good, thank you. So I just want to get your thoughts on the, uh, the revised schedule format. What do you like about it? What do you, what do you not like about it? Um, did you vote in favor of it, you know, in the, in the meeting or if you had a say at all? So just want to get your thoughts on the new format. I, I did not have any participation in it. Um, I, I, I Obviously, I'm, I'm new to the conference, and I think there's a smarter minds than myself because I'm, I'm so new. I, I really don't understand the conference that well. So I think the other minds are much better than mine in terms of, of what to do and what precautions to take. Um, I, I just want to get through this season the best possible with as, as few casualties as, as can be and see what happens come March. If we can all get into March, I think it'll be a successful year. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. And we have Mark Singlais of Nobby. 
Rick, I think you'd said or tweeted a while back that you would have been in favor of not starting the season until uh, January. Do you still feel that way, that that would have been the way to go rather than doing the bubble events and the MTE, that kind of thing? I do, but but I understand why, uh, like I said earlier, and I'm much more in favor of, of everybody making the NCAA tournament. And listen, this is not something where I want Iona in the tournament. That's it's not the case. I'm, I've been very lucky in my life to have participated in, in multiple NCAA tournaments. And I just think it would be a great shot in the arm for college basketball. As far as the January 1 starting point, uh, I was hoping, praying that a vaccine would come into play at that point in time and it could alleviate some of the problems we're going to have. There's also a lot of teams that just can't afford the bubble right now. So it's, it's, uh, we're going to get started. We're going to see how it works out. Let's hope we don't have too many cancellations and too many postponements. Uh, but needless to say, it's, it's something that we're, we're uncharted waters right now, entering uncharted waters, and we, we really don't know what's at the, the other end of everything. Thank you. Next up, we have Jaden Daly. Jing. Hey, Rick, how are you? Great, thank you. Just something that we, I didn't get to mention the other day when we spoke after the Hofstra announcement. You mentioned Osborne Shima as one of the uh, newcomers that really impressed you, but as far as some of the other guys that are new to the program, who in particular should we look out for and what does – each one of them bring to the table in a nutshell. I know you got a lot of them and time is limited. So if you can, just a little bit here on, on everybody. Well, I'm going to be perfectly honest. We're, we're struggling right now, but every first year, whether it be Providence, the New York Knicks, the uh, Kentucky, Louisville, no matter where I've been, the first year is very difficult because you're teaching a totally new system. Um, we're coming off a, a really difficult season where a great coach, unfortunately, wasn't able to coach. And they had, a, they had a, a very poor season with only three now returning players. Uh, Osborne certainly a gifted young, young basketball player at seven feet, 200 pounds. But we're, we're struggling learning the offenses and the defenses, the EuroLeague sets that we're running. Uh, you have to have a lot of player movement, a lot of ball movement, and they're struggling with that. They like to dribble too much. But where we're really struggling is at the defensive end. We're just not understanding the full court presses. We're not understanding the matchup zone. We're not understanding our man-to-man -man tendencies. I think this is all normal because it's a new coach, new team. But we're going to open up at Fordham, and it's two and a half weeks away. I was hoping at this juncture we wouldn't be struggling as much as we are. The good thing is I have talent. If you didn't have talent, it would be a real big problem trying to teach people things, the fundamentals of the game. But we have talent. We have uh, three seniors that can play. The only person that's really getting it offensively and defensively is Dylan Van Eck. Um, he's a 6'8 forward from the Netherlands. He understands the offensive system very well. I think he's, he's used to that EuroLeague ball movement, player movement. Um, but once we get the defenses down with our size and talent, I think we can be a competitive basketball team. We have Sounds good, right? hands up in the chat. We'll allow Bruce Beck to go on. Bruce? Hey, Rick. Welcome back to the New York area, my friend. Thank you. Bruce, you're still looking young as hell. <laughs> I'm working hard at it. Uh, Rick, how would you describe your level of excitement with this new opportunity to coach the Gales? You know, for me, most every coach that has coached here has loved it. Going back to Jimmy Valvano, then to um, Pat Kennedy, uh, you had Jeff Rulin, you had Kevin Willard, Timmy Welsh. They've all had great success. Tim Kloos did a fabulous job. They've all enjoyed it thoroughly, the I Iona community. And for me, it's a little bit different than all the people I just named because they looked at Iona as a great place to work. It was a stepping stone for something higher to them. For me, it's a way to end a career. And um, it's the way I wanted to end. I started early on at a small school that I deeply loved, Providence College. And now I can end at a similar type situation at Iona, end a career that's less spanned over 40 years of professional and college basketball. So I have about, I'm God willing, I have about seven, eight years left in coaching. I'm still as passionate as ever. And I'm, it, there's no finer place 
the work than Iona College. So I'm really pumped up about it. Got a great group of guys to work with, a terrific athletic director, a great president. Uh, so it's a, just a wonderful community. Uh, I'm really happy to be back in New York. This is where I grew up, and it's exciting to be part of the Iona program. Good luck, Rick. Thank you. Thanks. All right, we have time for one or two more. Aiden Jolly, you're next in line. Aiden? Yeah. Hey, Rick, thanks for coming on this morning. Uh, when you look back on your career, what is it like to be kind of back at a smaller school, like similar to, you know, something you started with Boston University? You know, Iona, the thing about Iona that, that's – that's great is you can, you can recruit. I've always told my assistant coaches, I've had over 31 assistants that have moved on to be head coaches. And I've always told them, and everyone has listened except one and it, uh, about what, what type of job to take. I always told the people, look, if you think that you can recruit with the best teams in the conference, then it's a damn good job. And that's why I think Iona is a very good job because you can recruit at a very high level. And believe it or not, just as high as a Louisville uh, because you, we attracted eight players last year. We have four more, which we can't talk about yet on the way. And, and certainly down the road, we, had, we hope to attract great basketball players. And uh, the conference, the one thing I found out, you have a bunch of young coaches in this conference. And I, and I know quite a few very well. Steve Massiello played for me uh, in a Final Four. And he's, out, he's an outstanding mind in the game at Manhattan. Uh, I've known Shaheen Holloway and, and King Rice for years. They're outstanding minds in the game. I'm getting to know all the other coaches. And, you know, when you coach at this level, you, you don't coach players as big, as athletic, so you have to coach harder. You have to bring more fundamentals in. You have to be more innovative and creative because you don't have the size and some of the abilities that the other, other Power Five conferences have. So you really have to be on your game as a basketball coach and as a staff to coach in this conference. And I know we're going to have our hands full because I've got great respect for the coaches in, this, in the MAC conference. So, Coach, real quick, we have time for a very, very quick Question, just because I know we had a lot on here. Um, Sean, if you want to go ahead, ask yours. Um, th thank you again, Coach uh, Patino. But um, you mentioned the kind of, I guess, earlier the long line of good coaches to come through Iona. How are you putting your own twist on a program that, I, that does have a long history of success? Well, I think every coach is different you, uh, along the way. Kevin Willett happened to work for me, and I think he spent nine years here. Um, I, I think every system is different and you have to adjust your system to the players you have. Uh, in the beginning, uh, like I said earlier, it's, it's, it's very difficult because the players are – like I have an, two outstanding – three outstanding seniors. I mentioned Dylan Van Eck earlier, um, Isaiah Ross, uh, Asante Gist. They're all really good players. They're just struggling – learning the defenses that we're teaching. But they're very good basketball players. And if, if you had average basketball players that were marginal and trying to teach them something, then you, you, you're looking at a losing year and a very difficult year, and you better get busy with recruiting. That's not the case with us. At Iona, we were left with three really good seniors who just have to learn a totally new system. And once they do, I think they'll, they'll excel and have out, outstanding senior years. But Iona is, I'm hoping to put my stamp on a successful program. Uh, there's no finer coach in the game than the one I'm taking the place of in, in Tim Kloos. He was outstanding and he did everything the hard way. He was a very highly successful high school coach. Uh, I believe it was a division three, division two coach. Worked his way up to Iona, could have had the St. John's job. And uh, we're hoping that he gets healthy again and back in the game because he is certainly one of the better coaches in our game. And every coach that coached at Iona has had great success, and I, and I hope I'm as lucky as them. Coach Patino, thank you very much for taking time out of your day to join us. Um, to you, your players, your staff, and your family, we hope that you stay healthy, and best of luck this season. All right. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much, Coach Patino.